Well, Bill, first I want to start by thanking you for, for taking the time out of what I know is a very busy schedule uh, to join me today to talk a bit about the Rutgers Cancer Institute in New Jersey, uh, both the history of the Cancer Institute and where we're going as we move towards the future. Thank you, Steve. It's great to be here. Absolutely great. So can you tell me a little bit about um, sort of how your vision formed uh, for the Cancer Institute in New Jersey? I, when you joined in 1993, coming from Yale, the Cancer Institute was really in its infancy. The actual cancer center was in physically in its infancy. We had one office and three cubicles. But the planning had gone on for several years by the dean and by the associate dean for research, Medelman, Mike Gallo, respectively, who had put together a planning grant with faculty across the medical school in Rutgers um, to plan for uh, an NCI-designated cancer center, at least one that could be capable to even compete. Because back then, there was no place in New Jersey that could even compete for NCI designation because none would, would have the eligibility criteria. Excellent, I mean, that's really interesting. And so when you arrived, you know, after that initial planning had taken place, sort of what was your vision and what were your first steps in terms of trying to operationalize that vision? I was given some very sound advice from my colleagues at Yale. They said, your instinct will, build, will be to build the basic science programs first. They said, build the clinical programs first because that's what the center at first will be known for. So I tried my best to recruit outstanding clinical people, clinical researchers, master clinicians, um, people who could really be dedicated to giving incredibly high level care to the people in New Jersey. Well, that's terrific. And, and how long would you say it took for you to kind of get that center of gravity in place as you were doing those recruitments? It's a very good question. You know, it, it probably, um, in retrospect, seemed overnight, but it was a lot of hard work to convince people of a vision. We didn't have a building. We had some cubicles. We had some lab space over across the river. But I was very fortunate to have been involved with training many outstanding fellows at Yale who went on to join faculty at other places who I sort of pulled in the chit and I said, come on, we're gonna start a cancer center in New Jersey, uh, let's give it a try. And uh, a few fantastic people joined and they recruited their friends and before you know it, uh, we had some people who were actually very good at seeing patients. And then we built the relationships on the basic science campus uh, to start building out the basic science programs. Well, that's, that's really amazing. And uh, you know, when I think about it, you joined in 1993, and you successfully uh, obtained NCI designation in 1997, then moving on uh, in the next cycle in 2002 to get comprehensive designation, which is truly remarkable. I mean, that's uh, almost unprecedented today uh, to be able to, to achieve that. And so that's you know, an amazing accomplishment. Why did you think at that time it was so important to achieve an NCI designation for the Cancer Institute? I really felt that the designation by the NCI was the highest standard you could reach. And it was clear to me for a variety of reasons that New Jersey needed at least one cancer center, maybe more, that could compete at that level in terms of patient care, clinical research, basic research, population research, and then not just say that ourselves that we've done it, but have the highest authority like the NCI and their peer review say, you guys meet, make the grade and now you have the designation. And I think that was, has been, as you know, Steve, the key differentiating factor for the Rutgers Cancer Institute of New Jersey. Absolutely. Yeah. So as we celebrate the 50th anniversary of the National Cancer Act, how important, Steve, do you think the Cancer Center's program is in the fight uh, to ultimately someday eliminate cancer? So that's a great question. And uh, I truly believe that the Cancer Center's program is critical uh, to continued progress in our fight against cancer. I think when you look back at the progress we've made over the last 20 years, many of those seminal discoveries, uh, discoveries leading to 
checkpoint inhibitor therapy or discoveries leading to uh, CAR T cell therapy or discoveries leading to sort of molecularly targeted therapies or precision medicine uh, really had their birth in cancer centers uh, across the United States. And it was the Cancer Act, the National Cancer Act, uh, back in uh, 1971 when that was signed that gave birth to the Cancer Centers Program. And I think that that program continues to evolve and adapt to changing landscapes. It has particularly over the last five to 10 years taken a new focus on the community, on the importance of cancer centers reaching out into their communities and their catchment area. The Cancer Centers Program has put a premium now on diversity and inclusion, which I think is of incredible importance as we better understand unique aspects of the cancer burden in different communities. So I think the Cancer Centers Program continues to play a critical role and will continue to do so as we implement many of the findings over the next 20 to 50 years. Well, I do think the, the new approach to the community and to um, the broad aspects of preventing, intercepting, and curing cancer uh, is so critical. Uh, I know that uh, having taken care of patients for so many years, you and I never saw someone come in and say, so happy I've been diagnosed with cancer so you can treat me. It's always, what could I have done differently so I wouldn't have to wind up with these, this uh, very difficult disease? And I think your focus and the focus of the Cancer Center's branch to really look at prevention and screening and intercepting the disease and maintaining health is absolutely essential. Absolutely. So Steve, yeah, you were recruited to become the directors of the Rutgers Cancer Institute and senior vice president of oncology services for RWJ Barnabas Health in 2017. That dual appointment was really a first and showed the commitment and partnership of the health system. Can you talk a little bit about that partnership and what it means for cancer patients in New Jersey? Well, absolutely, Bill, and thanks for that question. So, uh, yes, uh, you know, uh, stepping into that role in 2017 uh, was uh, an interesting experience. Uh, and I often, when I talk about this, uh, you know, you like to look back and think that all of these entities were well established, uh, et cetera, at that time. But the RWJ Barnabas Health System had really only become a health system a year before in 2016. And uh, Rutgers Cancer Institute had existed as a Rutgers entity uh, for only four years uh, at that point. And so coming into that role, uh, it was interesting in that it was bringing together two newly formed cultures to create a new culture around cancer care and cancer services. Uh, but it's been a tremendous opportunity and very exciting uh, the health system is the largest in the state of New Jersey uh, and cares for over half of the New Jersey population, approximately 5 million people, um, and uh, sees about 11,000 new cancer cases a year, analytic uh, cancer cases. And so there's a tremendous amount of opportunity for an NCI designated cancer center to partner with a health system of that size. Uh, it was also incredibly important to me that the health system is very focused on uh, patient health, not just patient health care. And I think that's of critical import for cancer care as well. Cancer prevention, uh, cancer screening is a, a critical aspect of what we do as NCI designated centers. And uh, we serve a very diverse uh, community. And New Jersey's the, the fourth most ethnically diverse state in the United States. And so being partnered with a health system that takes that diversity as a real important focus and enables us to impact uh, so many uh, patients was, was really key. And the integration into Rutgers has been truly enabling as well. Uh, there are so many outstanding schools and investigators at Rutgers that provides this very ripe uh, and fruitful environment for the Cancer Institute uh, to do its work in terms of studying uh, the biology of cancer and the trying to translate those findings. So while it was challenging wearing those two hats, I think the position allows a much greater ability to deliver uh, the, the outcome of those research efforts uh, to the largest population we can possibly touch. So what were some of those challenges? I mean, the opportunity sounds fantastic, but integrating into two new systems, both large, 
must have been an experience. What were some of the challenges that you had to overcome and how did you do it? Well, uh, at any time you're coming in uh, to a new environment, uh, you have to be uh, careful to uh, try to listen and appreciate uh, uh, what the uh, cultures are. And as I had said already, uh, these were forming cultures uh, between the two with an, an underpinning of legacy culture uh, from the prior UMD and J, where CI and J had been based, and the two health systems that ended up forming RWJ Barnabas. Uh, and so uh, there were differences of, uh, of scale of vision and focus at the individual hospital sites. Um, but I think in, in fairly short order, it became very clear to me uh, that the leadership, both at the system level and the, and the level of the hospitals, were really passionate about uh, leveraging the strength of this system to care for as many folks as we could. And so uh, what originally seemed daunting um, quickly uh, became a very supportive environment. And uh, I came in the middle of these conversations between Rutgers and RWJ Barnabas Health about executing this new um, uh, MAA or Master Affiliation Agreement between the two entities. And I sort of look at us at the Cancer Institute as sort of being at the tip of the spear uh, for that relationship. And uh, we'd learn things a bit by trial and error. There's a certain amount of freedom uh, in not having to follow a script, uh, but you also do a little bit of recon by fire. You know, you go in one direction, uh, you hit a speed bump, or you fall in a, a pothole and you have to readjust a bit. Um, but because both institutions really wanted the cancer program to succeed, uh, even when there were some of those missteps early on, the support was there that we can continue to carry on. That's fantastic. Well, as you know, it's the, one of the great aspects of a cancer center and what makes cancer center so successful is the ability to create collaborations with the medical school, with the entirety of Rutgers, and now uh, with the health system, and most recently, the consortium partnership with Princeton University. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, that's a great question, Bill. Uh, we're especially proud of the fact that we are an NCI-designated consortia cancer center, and that partnership is with Princeton University. Uh, it, it brings together the largest private research university in Princeton and the largest public research university at Rutgers uh, together with one cancer center program. And uh, it really drives tremendous both basic and translational research some examples of which are around our studies of cancer metabolism. Eileen White at Rutgers and her collaborator Josh Rabinowitz at Princeton have made some seminal discoveries uh, in understanding the metabolic processes in cancer cells and within the tumor microenvironment that can be leveraged as potential targets for cancer therapeutics. Recently, the Ludwig Cancer Research Institute has established a new branch at Princeton University, uh, the Ludwig Princeton branch, uh, which is focused on cancer metabolism and is directed by Josh Rabinowitz and co-directed or associate directed by Eileen White. And it's another example of the power of this collaboration that manifests itself through the Rutgers Cancer Institute in New Jersey. I think being at Rutgers gives us the opportunity to collaborate with many of the other schools and institutes. We have robust collaborations with the School of Pharmacy, with the School of Nursing, with the School of Public Health, with both medical schools, and with the School of Arts and Sciences. And so uh, there's a tremendous opportunity for investigators in different disciplines to combine their intellect and their knowledge around the cancer problem. And so those collaborations, I think, are key to our success and what one would hope would happen with an NCI-designated cancer center. You know, one of the really um, important aspects of this cancer center has been the unwavering support of the state of New Jersey, going back to the original announcement that there would be uh, an effort to build an NCI-designated center uh, back to Governor Florio, and then the governors uh, thereafter all were very supportive. Can you talk a little bit about that support, including the state cancer, cancer registry that brought forth Screen New Jersey? Absolutely. 
So uh, we, as you've mentioned, have incredible support, both uh, from the executive branch, from the governor's office, as well as from both houses of the legislature. The Assembly and the Senate have been incredible supporters of the Cancer Institute throughout those years. And this manifests in a variety of ways. Uh, it, it manifests in, in real dollars in terms of their commitment to the Cancer Institute in New Jersey each year in the governor's budget, but also to particular programs, as you mentioned. And our New Jersey State Cancer Registry, which is actually the home of a national SEER uh, database, is co-managed uh, between the New Jersey Department of Health and the Cancer Institute in New Jersey, and that gets competed competitively every five years uh, for the SEER grant, and we've been very successful in maintaining that. And then our Screen NJ program, which is a program that focuses on screening for colon and lung cancer, and we're hoping to expand to other tumor types, was launched in fiscal year 2018 uh, through the support of the state of New Jersey and continues to be supported uh, by the state uh, moving forward. So without the state's support, uh, we would not be successful. You know, Steve, um, we started the Cancer Institute with one office and three cubicles. You're about, and you have just uh, broken ground for New Jersey's first freestanding cancer hospital. Can you tell us a little bit about this incredible facility? So I'm very excited uh, about this project uh, that also is a joint effort uh, between uh, the health system, uh, RWJ Barnabas Health, uh, the city of New Brunswick, uh, the county of Middlesex, uh, state of New Jersey, and uh, Rutgers University uh, all coming together. Uh, the New Brunswick uh, Development Corporation, DEVCO, is instrumental uh, in this activity, uh, as is uh, the uh, uh, New Brunswick uh, School Board. Uh, uh, part of this project, building a 510,000 square foot, 12 story cancer pavilion, uh, complete with inpatient and outpatient activity, advanced imaging capabilities, multidisciplinary clinics, um, operating rooms, uh, 10 brand new state of the art research laboratories. In addition to that project, which I think is going to have incredible positive impact, not only on New Brunswick and the surrounding community, but on the entire state, having a destination cancer hospital within New Jersey. As a part of that project, we're building a brand new school uh, for the city of New Brunswick, a $55 million school with no taxpayer dollars being expended to build that school. And we believe that that's an investment in the future cancer researchers and physicians that may go through that school and then ultimately decide to pursue a career uh, in cancer research and cancer care and may wind up practicing or, or performing research in the new pavilion. And so uh, how can you not be excited about being a part of a project uh, that's covering uh, all the spectrum uh, of activity like that? Fantastic. So Bill, as we wrap up uh, our discussion, um, what would you say is the thing you were most proud of accomplishing in your tenure as the director of the Rutgers Cancer Institute in New Jersey? It's a tough question. We certainly were proud of getting the NCI comprehensive designation. That was very important. Proud of the faculty and people that was staff we were able to uh, attract to New Jersey. But the most proud, I think we would all say, was that we were really able to deliver extraordinary care uh, to people in New Jersey and from beyond New Jersey, but really fundamentally for the people of New Jersey who really needed a center uh, of this quality. And I think to this day, as I look back at the Cancer Center and I think about the thousands of patients that we cared for, um, that's that I think sticks with me as perhaps the greatest accomplishment we really could bring to them the kind of care that's not, um, um, uh, there's no better place in the world to get cancer care today than at the Rutgers Cancer Institute of New Jersey. From my perspective, Steve, and uh, I know I speak for many of the people who had this idea that we, we could create a cancer center of extraordinary quality for the people of New Jersey, I think where you've taken it uh, was to previously unimagined places. And I know on behalf of all of us who were here some years ago and all the people in New Jersey uh, that this institution has touched, we owe you and your team a tremendous debt of gratitude. So a big thank you.
So Bill, thank you uh, for those kind words, but, uh, but I owe you, as does the rest of the Cancer Institute, a tremendous thank you to you and the original team, many of whom are still here at the Cancer Institute as a testament to that loyalty to what you built. Without your vision, without the foundation that you built here, uh, all that we're trying to accomplish now and what we want to continue to accomplish into the future would not have been possible. And I am truly indebted to you uh, for all you did uh, in launching this great center. Uh, and I hope to uh, make you proud uh, as the team continues to move forward. Well, thank you, Steve, and the feelings are mutual. <laughs>